Hey friends and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and today I'm going to walk you through how to start your own sweet potato slips. So a few things to note before we get started. The first is this is this couldn't be easier. Literally all you need to do to get started on your own sweet potato slips is go to the grocery store and just pick up a few sweet potatoes. When you're choosing a sweet potato, you want to make sure you're finding kind of the best sweet potatoes that don't have um, any blemishes on it. So go through and kind of choose the best looking sweet potatoes. And all you're gonna need from there is either a glass of water and some toothpicks or just some soil. You can definitely get soil from the ground, your backyard, your garden, wherever you wanna make sure it's really high quality soil though, because we are trying to get as many nutrients as possible. Um, because I live in Wyoming, our ground is super frozen right now. So I actually just went to my local Walmart and I'm just going to be using this um, starter organic mix. I think it was like $4. So what's nice about that is you can make sure everything is really sterile. You know that there's no bad bacteria or anything like that that's going into your starting mix. And so that's nice just because you know that you'll be kind of kicking everything off on the right foot. But obviously you are more than welcome to just go into your garden and scoop up some soil and bring it in. One thing that's really important to note as well is sweet potatoes love heat. And so our biggest priority right now is going to be making sure that the soil stays warm so that the sweet potatoes can thrive. I've kind of learned all of this through trial and error. Last year, I saw a video of someone starting their own sweet potato slips and I was completely inspired. The issue was it was probably June when I saw this video. And so I started my own sweet potato slips as quickly as I could. I got them in the ground probably July, late July. And here in Wyoming, our freeze date, I think our first freeze is around middle of September. And so obviously sweet potatoes love warmth. They do not do well. They don't, oh, they don't freeze well. And so I kind of just had to wing it and our sweet potatoes turned out they were great. Um, they were about this big, every single one of them. So we had one meal worth of sweet potatoes. All I planted was uh, two slips. And so um, it was definitely a learning lesson. And the biggest takeaway I had from that was that you need to start your sweet potatoes early in the winter. That way they have as much time as possible to get as big and strong as possible. So with that, it is currently the last day of January. It's a little bit early, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is just select which potatoes you wanna try where or just stick with one method. Again, we've got the water glass method or the soil method. So because the opening of my glasses aren't that big, I'm gonna reserve the smaller potatoes for the glasses just to make sure it's not tipping them over. And I'm going to use my big potatoes here in this soil that I've prepared. So all I did with the soil was I went ahead and dumped some of that starting mix into this plastic container that I have. And this is just an old storage container. Um, I put it about three quarters full and then I dampened it with just some water. You wanna make sure that the soil is moist. I hate that word as well, but not soaking wet. The reason for that is I don't have any holes in the bottom of this. And so you wanna make sure that you're not flooding your sweet potatoes. That's a good way to get a lot of mold or rot or bacteria built up on them. And you're not gonna be that successful. So you wanna make sure that the soil is damp and that it can kind of clump together and just kind of feels like potting soil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally, this couldn't be easier. I'm gonna take a sweet potato. I'm gonna take the spoon out. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of smooth out the soil. Take the sweet potato and just kind of bury it in. You wanna make sure that there's a lot of contact on it. So you wanna make sure that at least half the sweet potato is um, under the soil. And the, sweet, the soil that's under the sweet potato is super compact underneath it. So then I'm just going to kind of put the soil up around it and pack it in a little bit. I obviously don't want it to be too crazy, but just kind of make sure that the sweet potato is nice and snug in there. So as you can see, we have soil about halfway up and literally that's it. You can water it if you need to right now. I feel like my soil is pretty damp, so I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'll keep an eye on it. 
You're definitely gonna have to keep watering the soil. You wanna make sure that it stays damp, but you don't want to overwater it. Like I said, without having any um, holes in the bottom, it could get a little bit dicey. So just make sure that you're being a little bit careful as you're watering your potatoes. That's option one, super easy. <laughs> if you have a big enough bucket, you can definitely stick another one in there with it. I just don't have a big enough bucket, so I'm gonna stay with just this one potato. And then you, we're gonna move on to the water glass. So again, super simple. All we're gonna do here is I have one glass of water per potato, and I'm just gonna take some simple toothpicks. I think I'm gonna do about three toothpicks per potato, and you're just going to stab the toothpick into the potato on three sides so that it can hold it up within the glass and the sweet potato doesn't just fall into the cup. And then you're gonna go like that. I do need to fill my glass up with a little bit more water just because obviously the potato needs to be in water, but you only want kind of the bottom of it. Like that. And then we're going to do the other potato again. Just repeat of this. I'm gonna do this side down. Three toothpicks in the potato. Just like so. Make sure you have enough water, but not too much. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this. That's it. We are done with our sweet potatoes. So as I mentioned, Sweet potatoes love heat. So I am going to take this, and we actually have a wood-burning stove right over here that we keep warm, and when it's not on, there's sun that comes through a giant window we have right here. So the sun makes things super, super warm. We have really strong sun here in Wyoming because the elevation is pretty high. Um, we're at about 5,000 feet, so the intensity of the sun warms things a lot. Um, so during the day, I'll just have this sitting in the sun. And then during the evenings, when we have the wood burning stove running, I will just have this kind of sitting in front or near the wood burning stove. Obviously, if you're going to do that as well, make sure that you're keeping an eye on your container. You don't want to melt your container or anything like that. It does not need to be that hot. You want it just to be like 70, 80 degrees should be sufficient for keeping your sweet potato warm. So here's both of the methods. Again, I've got this sweet potato in here pretty far. And now let's jump over and get going on planting some of our onion seeds. So I just pushed all of the sweet potato things out of the way and we're going to get going on planting some of the onion seeds. What's really nice about onions is you can start them pretty early because you can just keep trimming off the tops. You want the tops to be about three to four inches. You don't wanna let them get taller. I did that last year and they were an absolute jungle to deal with. I had them sitting in a windowsill trying to get them to harden off a little bit. And I just had onions everywhere. They were getting tangled around other plants. So definitely make sure that if you start your onions early, you're just keeping them trimmed back. And that's really important because when you're trimming it back, it's not focusing on developing green, it's focusing on growing its roots. So when you put it outdoors, it'll be a lot stronger versus having a more leggy plant. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to just take this tray that I have. As you can see, it just has individual holes. Um, and I used these last year, so I already have them. So I'm gonna continue on with them this year. And these basically, you just take some of these little pellet um, pieces of soil and you can get these off of Amazon. I think I got mine from Walmart. And you just go ahead and place one of these inside each of the little openings and fill it up. One thing that's really important to note when you're doing this is you can see the pellets come in two different sizes. So make sure that you're buying the size of little pelleted soil that is right for you. If you buy one that's too big, it might not fit. Too small, it can get a little bit wild. <laughs> it's falling around. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. And I guess another thing to mention is you want to make sure that you're placing them whole side up. So there's a flat side and a whole side. Make sure that the hole is going up because that's where we're gonna stick our seeds. Okay, so I have two of the little pellets left over. 
And as you can see, I have one disc sitting in every hole. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take some water and just dump the water inside these little indentations. And that's gonna cause these to start expanding. It definitely takes a little bit of time, so just be patient, but you wanna use warmer water. I find that the warmer water works a lot quicker than cooler water, so we're just going to dump a little bit on each and I'll show you here in just a minute. And when you're dumping the water, definitely err on the side of not dumping enough water versus too much water. Remember when you're gardening, you can always add more water. You can't take water away as easily. So just keep that in mind as you're getting these kind of started. So while these start expanding and the water soaks in, I'm gonna take you through the seeds that I will be planting this year. Um, I have four different types. One of these is a shallot and the rest are onions. So the first one is a Patterson. This is from Territorial Seeds and it is a storage type onion. We started these last year and they are wonderful. We are still eating through them. It's currently January. They are all still solid. We haven't had any issues with any of them. Um, so these are absolutely amazing. They're pretty sweet. They're still kind of strong, but overall we are a huge fan of these. And this is a yellow onion. So the next is a ruby ring. You can see it there. This is a red onion. You can tell by the name Ruby. And this one also performed really, really well. The bulbs ended up being a little bit smaller than the Patterson onions did. And so I don't know if that was just an issue on my side or um, what, but I'm a huge fan of these as well. And we're gonna be planting these again. These are also a storage type. And again, we still have a ton of them and it is January. We have not had any issues with them here. And I'm actually gonna go run and get two of the onions. One's a Patterson and one's a Ruby ring so I can show you what they currently look like and you can kind of see the size that we ended up with. Okay, so here are some of the onions that we grew last year. Again, this is a Patterson. This is probably the average size that the Pattersons ended up being. And then here are some of the ruby rings that we have. Um, this is probably the biggest one that we got. Majority of them were this size or a little bit larger. So as you can see, the Pattersons are definitely bigger than the ruby rings ended up being, but the ruby rings are phenomenal. And I also think the size was something on my part. I realized that the ruby rings were not getting as much water as the Pattersons were, which will definitely um, impact the size. So hopefully we'll get some bigger onions this year, but these onions are phenomenal. They're really good um, pickled, raw, any form. They are so good. The next version or variety that we are going to be growing is this Monastrel, I think is how you say it. It is also a red variety and it is also a storage onion. I found that a lot of onions store really, really well. All you have to do is just make sure that when they're growing, the tops will fold over. You wanna make sure that the tops are folded before you pull them, and then you let them sit outside and cure for a week or two, and that's just letting the green tops die off so they'll turn brown. And then all I did was just braid all of the tops together, hung them up in our cold storage room, and they are all lasting great. They're all just rock hard, as you can see. The next thing we're, we're gonna be growing is a Ambition. This is actually a shallot. It's a storage variety. And it says it lasts up to one year in storage, which is awesome. I love shallots. I feel like they're very underrated. They're kind of a mix between garlic and onion if you've never had one. And so it's nice because if you ever run out of garlic or ever run out of an onion, a shallot is also a great option. So we're gonna start, try this as well. This will be my first time growing shallots this year. So I'll take you along with the journey and keep you updated on anything, any of the successes and lessons learned. So as you can see here, these all have fully expanded. So we started with this and they now have expanded to this. So what you wanna do with these is you can see that there's kind of a, a mesh around them. You're gonna take the mesh and you're just gonna pull it back. And I have found that that works the best, kind of like that, just to free up the top 
and then you're just going to loosen the top a little bit and then we're just going to take one or two seeds and put them inside again you can see where that indentation is still and we're just going to put a few seeds inside that indentation or around that area you can leave the mesh on the rest of it, I actually have a few onions that I started from seed last year and it was funny, I thought the mesh was going to go away, but it actually just ended up getting caught in the roots. It wasn't an issue, the roots can definitely grow through it, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Because I have four onion varieties, or I guess three onion varieties in a shallot, I'm going to do one row per onion and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with the other row. I think I'll probably do Patterson's just because I have two red types, so maybe I'll do Two rows of Patterson's, one of Ruby Ring, one of the other red variety, and then one of the shallot. So here are what each of these little discs look like now that they're expanded. I went through and just pulled back the mesh around them all. And then all you do is just take your fingers and kind of fluff it up a little bit just to make sure that everything's loose. You obviously don't want to just plant your plants into rock hard soil. And this is also a good way to just kind of test how moist the um, soil is. Like this one, I can feel that it's pretty dry down there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that guy. And then all you're going to do is just take, make a little indentation with your finger. Take about, I don't know, three to six seeds and just kind of scatter them over around in here. What's nice is you can actually, um, separate them so as we get more and more plants you can just continue to separate them and then just kind of pack the soil back on top of them you want to make sure that all of the seeds are covered obviously with the soil okay so i went ahead and i have all of my onion seeds planted so all i'm going to do now i guess one thing to note before i put the cover on is there's some larger holes in the tray so like here down here that's where you want to put your water. You don't want to water directly on top when you are watering these, just to make sure that you're not disturbing the soil. Um, if you have a teeny, teeny little sprout starting and then you dump water on it, it can kill it. So I recommend just pushing, putting the water down in these little holes and that way it goes to the entire cell. And then all you're going to do now is just put your lid on top this just helps keep things a little bit warmer and again I'm gonna stick this in an area where it will stay pretty warm these say that for the, for the um, seeds to germinate the soil needs to be around 60 to 70 degrees I believe that's for all of them so I'm gonna make sure that they are going into a really warm area and keeping the lid on just helps keep some of the warmth in so you definitely want to do that just to make sure things stay warm and then as the onions start growing you can go ahead and take the lid off just to give them a little bit more room but definitely make sure that you're cutting them back so i actually have um some extra seeds and it's some of the older seeds so some of the seeds from 2020 and onion seeds really don't last that long so i am going to try one more method i'm just going to put um, some soil into a little container that I have and just sprinkle some of the seeds over it just to use up the rest of the seeds and we're going to test that way as well. I've only ever used these cells for onions before and I know that's kind of an untraditional way to do it. Most of the people just do kind of a plate of soil so I'm going to give it a go and we're going to try both, method, mo <laughs> both methods this year. Okay, so I went ahead and just filled up some little plastic cups that I have. I put some holes at the bottom, just about three or four holes, just to make sure that we are not drowning them out um, since they are in these plastic cups. And then I went ahead and just labeled, this says Ruby Ring, um, what the cups are, which was a great reminder to me to label what is in here. Usually I just uh, tape sticky notes to the front of each row. That way I know exactly what is in that row. You might think that you're going to remember what's in these, but I promise you, <laughs> you're going to be planting these in four or five months. And by the time you get all of your seeds started, there's no way that you're going to remember it or the tray might get turned on the shelf under the lights or something along those lines. So seriously, I know it can seem daunting, but just label every single row or label every single cell so you know what you're actually planting. I did not do that last year. I was like, oh, I'll remember it and had a few surprises in the garden and had things 
where they weren't supposed to be. So just take my word for it and make sure you're labeling everything. So now all I'm gonna do is just get the rest of the seeds, the older seeds planted. Um, I'm just gonna put, I don't know, 10 or so seeds. I guess I'm just gonna put the rest of this packet in. We're starting with the ruby ring and I'm just going to kind of mess up the soil, sprinkle these in around and then put some soil back on top. And then I'm just gonna repeat that for the rest of the onion types. So here we've got Patterson and the last one will be those Ambition Shallots. Okay, and there we have it. I have all of the onion seeds planted. And one thing that you do wanna note is seed depth. Um, this is about an eighth of an inch is all the seeds need to be in. So literally just a kind of a dusting of soil over them. Make sure you're not planting them too low or else you're going to risk them not germinating or not being able to break through. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to put all of these in the windowsill in the daytime when the sun is really strong and in front of the wood-burning stove at night. When the seeds are just germinating, you don't need to have them in underneath your grow lights. Um, you just want to make sure that the soil is warm. That's kind of your main priority right now. Once you start seeing seedlings sprouting, that's when you're going to want to make sure that they are under the grow lights and you can kind of remove them from the heat. Obviously, they still need to stay warm, but keeping the soil super warm is less of a priority. So just make sure that as you're starting your seeds, you're kind of paying attention to where the seeds are in your operation. Again, when you're just trying to germinate the seeds, soil warmth is your most important priority. And then once you're seeing little sprouts come through, you're gonna switch that priority to making sure they're getting like 16 or so hours of light, um, artificial or natural light per day. So with that, we are all done. Just a recap of everything we did. We planted all of our onions here and here. We did our two potatoes in the water. And then right here, I have my potato in the soil. Again, make sure you're just keeping these all warm and you should be successful. I will keep you all updated as these things start to progress. Um, I'll definitely be checking in with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please make sure to let me know. And thank you again. We will see you next time. Bye guys.